I like it when exclusives like that where it's basically the same figure, but just a little bit extra difference. That way you're not buying the same figure twice. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Collecting Brothers. I'm John. This is Josh. We're breaking down all the weekly toy news. It's a big week, man. A lot, a lot of fun, fun stuff here. And let's just jump in, dude, because let's get started. So last week was Legion's Con. Last weekend was Legion's Con. And we had a lot of, you know, our indie friend, indie toy lines out there showing off some of their figures. From Spiro, though, they gave us a full solicitation of kind of what's coming with these figures, but their new Bushido line, right? Their Samurai and Folklore line. And this is the San Elite Samurai. Previously, we saw just like kind of the 3D renders of these, but they are, they have those check models now, like the fully painted models um, out there. They were showing them off at Legion's Con. Good sign to see. I'm, I can't wait for this line. I feel like it's something. I feel like it's like something that we need. Just getting any sort of samurai action figures. Like the closest thing we got is like silver samurai from the X-Men. That's what we got. <laughs> right. And we had those like Fush Ninja toys, but um, yeah. these look yeah. far superior than those Fush Ninja toys from just like the sculpt. And even we know just like now I feel like everybody knows the Spiro through their plastic yeah. and through their Animal Wars of the Kingdom. Yeah. So like it's we- going to be a good figure. You know? It's yep. going to feel good. But they did the San Elite Samurai, but they also are, are showed off the uh, Samurai Bounty Hunter. And in this one, I'm really digging here. I, I just like the look of this guy, all the freaking swords. And this right here, I was giving me Zoro from One Piece. Definitely. Like, he, it, it has to be intentional, right? Especially even the, the color scheme. Like, yeah, the, the green, the red. Yeah, he, it's, it's definitely Zoro. You got the scar. The only thing that it's not is like he doesn't have green hair, right? That's it. Yeah, but it's like still kind of like slick back, spiky. But yeah, like all those swords that he's coming with here and three different head sculpts as well. You got the smirking, you got the un, you know, do rag that's off, and then you got the grimacing. And yeah, this is really cool that we're getting a lot of little extra things with Spiro, which, you know, is great. It's great. All right. And kind of Spiro adjacent, there is their Bushido line that we should be getting here soon. But Spiro adjacent, Adam highly articulated that's his youtube channel is teaming up with tnt toys and they are doing this thing called space zombies from mars so he's kind of working on a new toy line here and they showed off some figures at legions con Uh, so yeah so again space zombies from mars here we have a space suit guy and an astronaut but also has a zombie head as well so maybe he gets infected some type of infection out there got the fully painted models here as well as some you know the prototypes in the back there uh, here's a different look of a different zombie. So you got little different zombie parts to it with a broken, you know, some type of effect piece back there. But yeah, what do you think of Josh on these? I think it's really fun. I think it's fun that you get the figure, but then you can kind of completely change it up. Like the, like with those attachments, it just makes it, it just makes it almost like a two in one, right? It just makes you like you're buying a astronaut figure, but you're also buying a zombie figure. So mm-hmm. I think a fun concept and it makes me want to buy it more. Like, this is not just a astronaut figure. This is two in one. And they are going to be going the quick starter route. So they're kind of starting from the ground up. Uh, March 1st, 2025 is their kind of their planned start date for that Kickstarter. But they are going to be doing a kind of a, they're going to be popping in on everybody's show. I mean, stay tuned for us. We might have them on our show. So we'll get to talk to them and see what they have and get to know these people here behind the, sorry. Space Zombies from Mars. Okay, let's keep it going here. Four Horsemen Studios. Something that have been is now technically a new trend because of last year's Legion's Con, but they did a surprise drop. So if you were at Legion's Con last year, you were able to access the Valiant Knight if you were at the show. You could buy it then and there, open it up, start playing with it. Well, with their Reign of the Beast wave, they had a couple lizard people, right? This little snake people. Well, they dropped a, a warrior here of that you know type. And man, this looks good. So you could have picked this up here. We have door clear having the figure in hand, showing it off there. It's so cool that they do this. And they did say that next year they will also be doing another surprise drop for for Legion's Con. Man. So, but yeah, what do you think of Josh? What do you like? What do you like about these? It's cool. You know, it just makes your Legion's Con experience more special. Even though you know we know that there's going to be a standard release for everybody, right? But you yeah, can get correct. this in hand first. This like Quaddle Warrior, they're using those i love those pauldrons how like they're they're basically the shape and the sculpt of the night pauldrons that we're used to seeing but just with added sculpt on top of it but just like that like interest intricacies that make it kind of give that snakish vibe to it 
Mm-hmm. And honestly, I actually enjoy the quaddle with legs and a tail more so <laughs> than just the tail. Like we, we've seen with the other kind of standard Reign of the Beast figures. Yeah, I think those are just kind of like more deities, you know, and like maybe higher ups, but you got to have the infantryman. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it just the aesthetics a little bit better. You can Even play though, with them. You can play with them better too. I think pose yeah. them more. I mean, that tail is pretty articulate, but it's like a trunk, right? It has that L joint at the bottom, and that's basically it for like you know, like getting deep and low, right? Like it's gonna be a snake. Uh, but yeah, no, I love the color scheme on here that they did, man. Just that black and red throughout the whole figure is is beautiful, and then the underbelly being that you know lighter color, you know, very snakeish, right? But yeah, here's everything you're getting with him, and the cool thing here, it being an Oleg Thigar reuse on the body. This sucker comes with trigger finger hands. <laughs> so you can, you know, throw them over into the cosmic side if you wanted to, right? You get a lizard out there in the in space. But but yeah, like Josh said, it will be doing a standard release as well uh, early next year. So if, again, if you didn't make it to Legion's Con, not everyone does, you can always get it later, right? So don't worry. Don't, don't be looking on eBay, man. Don't do that. Okay, let's keep it going here. I wanted to show off a little video here from D Amazing that he took. It's about Baethier, the dragon. Jeremy Gerard kind of talking about one of their uh, the butter models is what they call. It. Let's take a listen. Actually, hold on. I got to share sound for you because you want to hear this. Listen to this. Listen to this. It's going to be like one of the things I did was you know just hearing these joints, like hearing those indents. It's starting to allow us to say, okay, this is how it's going to pose. This is how it's going to maintain its shape. Even like you see the wingspan here. These are the small wings. These aren't even the larger wings. But because of those there in my like place, this we were at least able to you know move the wings a little bit. Wow. So yeah. Did you hear that, Josh? You hear all that ratcheting and that clicking? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I don't think it, you could have done it any other way, right? Like, it's like, I, I would, I think everybody kind of assumed it would be ratchet. It's like, you can look mm-hmm. to Galactus or this, the, the Sentinel, right? It has to be ratchets because yeah. the amount of plastic and the weight, <laughs> you, you can't do it without ratchets. Yeah, that's true. And uh, they were kind of, go- Jeremy did kind of go on and just say like, you know, they're thinking more of the center is going to be rotocast, but it's going to be a nice, a nice thick rotocast. But, you know, again, it's just good to hear that sound, man, on those check models that they have. So it's going to be fun. I think for more, for me, what we're pressing more is just like seeing it instead of comparing it to like, you know, that they, they showed us the comparisons, the digital render to like the troll and like standard figure, but just looking at, honestly, I like to, I got the comparison to Jeremy, like having the reference point of a human, <laughs> a, a, a normal person there, it looks bigger than, than I really thought. And I think it's because the wings are like kind of down. So yeah. not only does it look long, but it's also wide and like, oh my gosh, like it looks like a, like a mini dog, man. It's like big. <laughs> this thing is huge. That's what impressed me right now. That's what people were saying for sure. And Jeremy did say that those are the actual, those are the closed wings. It's like kind of the more right. receded wings. Yeah. So yeah. The, not the splayed the, out ones. Yeah. The, the splayed out ones are just going to be massive, man. But yeah, no. And it's going to be fun, man. Bathier's Bathier's really cool. I do want to make a correction. I did call this a Drake dragon i do apologize that i was I, that wasn't it's not a drake a drake has no wings <laughs> this is just a traditional dragon um, oh gotcha more like what's it called uh, shenron that's what it would be like shenron that. is like a snake dragon and i like those are technically called uh lung dragons <laughs> i'm learning a lot about dragons dude although okay. all of our this video will like you know on the bay i read all the comments and stuff and i'm man people love dragons and i've been learning a lot so man, this is just more like a european you know traditional dragon but all right, let's keep it going here. Thank, uh, shout out D Amazing, though. He's the one that posted that video. Check him out on Instagram, friends. All right, let's keep it going. We're going to NECA here. A couple of eight inch figures here. This is part of their cloth uh, line here. But we're getting a chase, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Hitchhiker, uh, an upgrade on that uh, version here. So this is part of that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And this is, you know, one of the Sawyer brothers out there looking to hunt some, some people. <laughs> Look, I believe they're still doing these eight inch figures i thought it's like so few and far between that i don't know if they are stopping and they're so keep going with this stuff yeah they're just gonna keep you know they do it i think they have fun but i do just want to kind of shout out the the change in soft goods from NECA. so this was the original release here you can kind of see more of the the threading that i'm not sure exactly how to explain that but you can tell like it's you know soft goods in a small scale but when you get to here like the believability is a lot better you know yeah they definitely fixed the hemmings of the shoulder because the previous one it's kind of laying more like a like a sleeveless you know shirt mm-hmm. whereas the other one the shoulders are not popping up as much 
and it maybe just looks like also to like a smaller thread count they're using because the yeah. other one was kind of a thicker material and so it looked bulkier yeah look at the pants too man i think they did a really good update on this uh this figure uh, but along with that they're also doing they're kind of celebrating the 40th or sorry 50th anniversary of the texas chainsaw massacre uh here we got another eight inch leather face <laughs> that's the pretty woman he's got his little mask on shout out of course inspired by eddie Gein. he's out there stitching everybody's body parts together i know this is a fun little eight inch figures here from from Nick. all right let's jump over to mcfarland toys uh they had a seven inch batman autographed gold label here this is cool man this is a, of course autographed by the artist i kind of I, I like these a little bit more when they're done by the artist this is ali Batamajo for this batman so. and it was uh it is pretty sold out on walmart right now but you know, it'll probably come back around Yep, another much too, right? It's a Batman we've gotten like several times now, and in like we got even like the there was like there was one where he was like yellow. There's like he's like yellowed the version, mm-hmm. and just just with the signature. Yep. Just get the artist out there. Uh, next up though, we got a black and white blue beetle accent edition here. This is also going to be a Walmart, still up for pre order though. Uh, but yeah, just you know, different colorway on this blue beetle that we've gotten. Uh, yeah, just a lot of times, but I do kind of dig the black and white here with the yellow bug eyes, man. I I, I feel. That. And then another uh, exclusive here, but this is going to be exclusive to Target in stores. This is GeoForce. So you actually, you can't buy this online. You have to go to the store, <laughs> right? And that's probably what Target wants, right? Target wants you to be shopping at their store for their exclusives because then you pick up some milk, you pick up some diapers and you're out the door, right? They making money. But yeah, here's GeoForce. I think that's just fun beyond, you know, Target trying to make money. It's just fun to actually have an in-store exclusive just because, you know, I feel like more and more, They've been stocking exclusives really well, and there's been less and less incentive. I, I feel like over the years to go in and actually, you know, hunt. It's just easier now to, and right. Some people might hate that, right? Some people might hate that, but just from a collecting perspective, it's just fun to actually have to go and hunt. Even though you waste gas, who cares? It's just a fun time. The hunt is always night, right? Because it's when you go out there, it's just possibility. When you come home, you realize there was nothing else. All right, but then we got another here. We got a Batman animated a new, sorry, Batman New Adventures, Scarecrow, and this one, man, this one I'm feeling like proper creepy. I like the sunken eyes, and of course, this is probably a testament to the design choices on the creator end. But I think this looks really good. No, yeah, like every time I see a new Batman animated adventures figures, like I'm getting more and more like I wish I could. I wish I could have, I wish I started buying these because they're getting deeper and deeper. But I'm more and more impressed, honestly, with these Batman adventure figures than kind of like the standard McFarlane DC multiverse line. Like sometimes it, that's becoming yeah. more mundane for me just because it's just the same characters, same sculpt, like basically every time. Yeah. Whereas like these are, I think, just artistically so much more refreshing and so much unique, uniqueness going on because each one has to be unique sculpt and each one has its own kind of quirkiness to it that helps it kind of be who it is. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It's definitely a, a style. And a, I, I find this one fun. All right, that'll wrap it up for McFarland. Let's jump over to Star Wars, the Black Series. We are getting a little two-pack here of a clone commando from the Urban Fighter style and a B1 Battle Droid training bot. This is fun. We knew these were coming, right? Just didn't know how fast or how soon. And like I've said before this whole year, man, this is the year of the droids. And I got a, got a training bot here, man. We got the targets, man, all the white. Like, I, I just love this. Man. You know, you get this again with your uh, any of your clone troopers, your shinies out there having some fun. All right. It works like because if you're, you know, just a fan of the Battlefront 2 game, which, oh, man, I wish we could have got some updates with that game or even just a Battlefront 3 game from EA. You know, this was like one of the skins that you could unlock. But on top of that, right, it appears in the Clone Wars episode where they're like training where they where they go back because everyone loved the rookies episode remember and so they're like all right did you guys want more rookies oh shoot we actually killed heavy, heavy. we got to go back in time so we can get more heavy they didn't know people were gonna like heavy that much <clears throat> so it works for both it works just like as a clone wars character plus a battlefront 2 character yeah and then this one the the, the commando just works for the battlefront 2 right we never see this this is more of just pure we've only seen this in game with the battlefront skin and is this the second time that this has happened because if we look back to the Bara Arc Trooper oh, they did yeah. a while ago, that was kind of the first time we saw a Battlefront 2 game skin exclusive. Like it was that that skin technically doesn't appear in books and movies and mm-hmm. show, whatever. Mm-hmm. It just appears in the game. And same with yeah. this thing, right? It's like not a named character. It's just 
appears in the game. Everyone so fighter I, skin, yeah. Yeah, and there's like there's like three commando skins, you know, that we that we can get. We got in the clean version actually with mm-hmm. the Walmart. It was a Walmart, so it was just a pure white. And now this one, and then there's like there's one, I don't know if they'll do it, but it's because it might be really expensive, but I hope so. It's like the more and more expensive one is like it's all a green and gray kind of digital camo. Oh, okay. And it looks really nice. But like I said, it's completely covered in digital camo. So that might be really expensive, like paint wise. So I don't know if they'll do it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But yeah, this is a gaming great. So it's going to be over at GameStop here. Yeah, it's really, really cool to pack here to get these, uh, these out there. And again, we'll see what other ones they do. I think they're going to be pulling from the you know gaming greats you know, from all the games. We'll see. Something else I was thinking about is, you know, with collecting, you know, you live and you learn. And I think re-releases are inevitable. And something that's mm-hmm. happened is that they released Delta Squad individually as Gamescom exclusives, like over like a span yeah. of like one or two years. Yeah. And some of those were harder to get. And now basically all four of the Delta Squad have gone up in price. But seeing these, I'm almost positive. Like if you guys are wanting Delta Squad and don't pay scalper prices, because I, I guarantee you anything that they're either, either going to release a four pack of Delta Squad or do double <laughs> packs, just re-releasing and then do two two sets of double packs. Uh, cool. So I'm for sure that's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's keep it going. Another two pack here. We're getting a Dagon Gera and a BX Droid hybrid from Jedi Survivor. So here is that Commando Droid or the BX Droid version of it. Uh, I'm kind of looking, looking cool again, man. Just a repaint of that super of the Commando Droids, man. And yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, gold paint came out great. Nothing else to say, right? It's just the same droid we've seen, but yeah, I, I could, I'll take in as many color schemes as you can take as you can mm-hmm. give me. And the cool thing here is with the other character, he has been released singly, but with no arm, right? How he shows up in the in the game initially. And here in this two pack, they gave him a forced force arm <laughs> to kind of get that variation and add more to that story as well. So I think that's I think that's cool. It's a cool move. Oh, well, that's way cool. Yeah, especially because now I like it when exclusives are like that, where it's basically the same figure, but just a little bit extra difference. So that way you're not buying the same figure twice. One other thing to note is with that BX Commando Droid, it does kind of look a little weird, but because they're using the gold plastic on the lower legs, like the calf oh, and the yeah. feet, and then gold paint on the other, there is a big, like, there's a, a starch difference between, mm-hmm. a stark difference between the two. Um, like, the paint is coming off really shiny, right? Whereas yeah. the, the plastic is more of like, it's like a duller shine, you know? Yeah, it's a matte, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, they have to do those kinds of things and i guess it does take you out a little bit but maybe just photograph him from the waist up all right but there we go friends there's another two pack for the gaming greats dig in and that bx droid and the force hand is sick let's keep it going here we're getting a little bit of role play here uh ren so from not kylo ren but like the the leader of the knights of ren ren is kind of like a title so the ren legacy lightsaber it's going to be 300 dollars here so this is what you'll be getting but they're also dropping a Ren helmet. This man, this I I love this uh, chrome finish, the little uh, markings on the on the front of it, man. And that'll be for eighty. And so I, I think this is fun. What are you thinking, Josh, on this role playing? I just like it, it's. I think eighty is a good price. I think eighty dollars for that helmet is is good because normally we've been seeing kind of an increase with helmets. Sometimes they go ninety to hundreds. But I just mm-hmm. think the problem is with this is because of the lack of story and even though yeah you could say you can reference the comments but how many how many people you know that actually read the comments True. you know i just think this is going to suffer luckily though you said it's an exclusive to, is it exclusive to where uh disney store right disney store. luckily that saves it. i think this is a perfect opportunity for that because i feel like they realized this is not many people are going to be interested making a limited release is the perfect release and how much is the lightsaber 300 300 yeah it comes with like a special box and stuff right. or a presentation on it yeah um, Plus the Disney exclusive, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. I like it. Just wish we would have got some more stuff, even like in a show. Like they should do some sort of animated show, kind of in the sequel trilogy. Kind of would help with that. Would be cool. I would love like a Knights of Ren show. Even like we can even yeah. do it with like uh, the sequel trilogy with like him and Kylo running around because like everyone loves for Kylo. sure. But I would also take some origins of of the Knights of Ren, and I think those are probably the most wasted yeah. in the series. We definitely need something like like an animated an a- animated show. I don't know why is just the way to go with Star Wars for some reason. <laughs> To flesh out the sequel trilogy would be cool. It's because Dave's always behind it, dude. <laughs> but now he's now he's doing movies, man. Not only that, but I just think sometimes with animation, I don't know, it's just easier because you, like the 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 fighting 
is done mm. by artists and artists know what they're doing whereas sometimes the right, fighting right. You, it's hard to get act really good actors that also are trained in fighting you know like not, not really everybody's hating not, yeah not everybody's hating in anyone you know yeah yeah all right let's jump over to haya we got a burning godzilla from king of the monsters dude this is this is cool too <laughs> and again i don't know if it's the effects here but man the pain apps here's probably what the figure looks like right without the light shining on them there is you know the kind of those deeper yellows to create that burning effect on 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 this godzilla here holy crap like i don't think somebody could have executed this more perfect right because there are limitations to plastic and to get that effect the way they did it even if they like they're using light but photographers are going to use light too you know so yeah that's true i don't knock any points off like i feel like that look you're going to be able to achieve that with with just a couple lights you know this is executed to perfection dude holy crap i, I yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just shocked at how well this came out like even without the exaggerated lights it still looks like it's glowing yeah um, like the paint apps did re- they, they did a really good job of getting that effect across yeah and then the, with the lights it just is a tenfold mm-hmm. this is a musket i didn't even know i i, I needed <laughs> this godzilla but they just executed to perfection i have burning godzilla the cool thing too about this and they're kind of pulling from sh figure arts books here is you're getting a little extra pieces for the Ghidorah uh heads because when he's like you know fully charged up and he does the radiation blast just melts them oh so you can swap out those pieces to get like the melted off heads on your Ghidorah from king of the monsters dude that is so cool and so smart because you know it's smart on them but it kind of hurt because it makes you want to be exclusively collecting his high because you know me and you we talk yeah. about we always like to be like, right. oh, did figure arts do better did high do better we kind of mix and match because sometimes Sometimes some of them are better, but lately high has been high has been crushing figures. And with this, I have the the figure it's Ghidorah. So now I am screwed. So it makes me wish I would have got the high Ghidorah. Dang it. Yeah, not compatible or you know, a little awkward to make compatible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I think they did a good job on this burning Godzilla. And another thing too I want to shout is like the gradient too. Like he's super hot right here in this, you know, on his uh, dorsal fins, but towards the feet, he's like that darker magma, <clears> you know. Like it's drying out. Yeah, love, it, love it. Right. No. Yeah. The, the paint job is exquisite. And like that justifies the price, you know, because sometimes when you get to like these other, like we have sometimes figure arts are kind of getting flatter. Like we looked at that Kong mm-hmm. and it's really yeah. flat, you know? Yeah. And if you look at this, this is so much paint. Like there's so many different colors going on. And uh, he'll be 51 on a highest site. So that's an import price. That's but... so, no, John. That's a really good price. If you think about it, the figure you're getting, yeah. oh yeah, fifty bucks. 51. And this is like you know, they're probably the same. They're, we we looked at the sizes. They're relative. Yes. Like they're almost yes. the same as the figure arts. Yeah, they seven are. inch. Yeah, yeah, they are. So yeah, no, it's 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 high is just so tempting, man. <laughs> just gotta well, get one and play around with it myself. Okay, let's take it around the net. First up here is Mudo King. One twelfth Batman from the Dark Knight with the Bat Pod, right? It's got a Christian Bale Batman coming with the Bat Pod. So if you didn't get a chance to get the exclusive with the Catwoman over at McFarland's, there might be a little bit of an extra chance for you. And it's up on Big Bad Toy Store if you want to check it out. Right. Or if you know you just prefer six inch and like True. the likeness, you know, this the, the, the pictures are a little fuzzy. A little I don't know. I feel like look at the 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 pure head sculpt, the Christian Bell head sculpt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. From what I can see, that looks good. Like, I see Christian Bell perfectly there. Even the hair is, like, exactly, you know, how mm-hmm. it was jailed in the movie. And the bat pod, you know, it could even probably probably could work even if you have, like, the... If you prefer the figure arts, it probably scale with the figure arts as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a strange vehicle. So, like, it doesn't have to be an exact size, you know. Yeah, but do you think... I don't know, from... I could be wrong from my memory, but I feel like in the movie, it was bigger. Do you feel like it's kind of small, or is that accurate in your memory? I think it was wider. The right, tires uh, the wider. T- tires were wider and bigger. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm thinking too. I think the bat pod is a little, and I think the colors are off. I, it's, from my understanding, it was a black. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, no, I think the the more and more I was actually excited about the bat pod, but the more and more talking about it, I'm actually like, <laughs> it's off because I feel like I don't know. It looks small. The tires are not wide enough, like you said, and, and it paints off. It was black. Yeah, it was black. But yeah, if you wanted to get a little chance there at that one twelfth scale Batman with the bat pod. Check it out in Big Bad Toy Store. Let's keep it going here. Fox Forge Toys, the guys that do the meta, or sorry. Galactic Valor. Galactic Valor. Excuse me. Thank you, Josh. They were at Legion's Con, and they were showing off their Warmock. 
right? This is that big old thing that they said let's it was one of their stretch goals. Uh, they have a prototype here that's in the work in progress, so nothing here is final. Articulation might change, you know, fit, you know, the design might change a little bit here. But look up on top there; that's a full six inch figure of one of their characters. So oh, this is sick! And when we talk, when we interviewed Galactic Valor Toys, he said like even if we don't reach that goal, the War Mock's coming. You know, we knew mm-hmm. this was coming. He let us know that it was coming, and. This thing is so cool. I just like that, you know, because sometimes when you go sci-fi route, you just think like in my eyes, just because I'm obsessed with Star Wars, you just think of like ships, speeders, hover bikes, hover cars. But to go kind of more like a creature mount in a sci-fi thing, kind of more like what you would see in like a Warhammer, you know, or something like that. Yeah. I, I love this thing. And like, I feel like I'm okay with not having articulation with it like that much, you know? <laughs> I feel like it's it works perfectly fine because he's more like the troll in Lord of the Rings where he doesn't really fight. He just carries the boom, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for sure. I mean, Star Wars does have big characters. We got the Rancor and stuff, but like, yeah, I get what you're no, saying. No, like, it's more like uh, the the Camille or the Iguana that Obi-Wan rides, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think it's cool for sure. And cool aesthetic, man, and just huge, man, huge. Huge, huge, huge things coming with some chains here. Yeah, real chains, man. So, yeah, shout out Fox Forge Toys, man. We'll see what they're coming out with their Galactic Valor figures. Dude, I'm excited for this line. I'm glad I got all in because I can't wait to get the war and put, I think it seems like, <laughs> I think that character, right? Gresh. Uh, I can't. No, not Gresh. No, that's, 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 that's Spiro. Spiro. But yeah, these characters. The blue they, guy. He was the blue lizard guy. The main character. Yeah, the water guy. Yeah, the water guy. Yeah. But. They also announced their Nexus Enforcer. This was also one of their stretch goals. It was one of their humanoids, right? That they go against the uh, the other uh, characters. Mm-hmm. And again, like he said, he was just like, you know what? These are coming and we want to make sure that people like them, but like they are coming. Yeah, it makes sense. Kind of like with like we saw with Spiro, like even though they didn't reach their goals, it's like you already put in that work with the designs and everything. Mm-hmm. Might as well just do like a second release even though it's not part of the kickstarter you just do a second release so really cool to get the humanoid characters looking big and bulky you know kind of gears of warish because i like the more traditional like the beret that he has on but like bulkier armor as well yeah like yeah for sure like mass effect kind of armor type character but still super yeah, yeah, unique yeah. to galactic yeah. valor and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. i'm i'm excited i feel like you know we love sci-fi so give us more <laughs> And this is a second buck for them, right? Because that first figures were just kind of one or two right. bucks there. Right. And so to get that second buck out there. And again, it was kind of interesting. Fox Forge is like, I don't know. They're just such nice people. Oh, he's such a cool guy when we interviewed him. Yeah. yeah. And so when he posted these pictures, he's just like, these are coming. But like, you know, don't like this. Nothing's final on these figures. We're more than willing to change things. We're listening to everybody. And right. Like, Remember when we talked about the feet, yeah. we were like saying like, oh, yeah. I wish they all didn't have the same feet. And like a week later, he like, all right, I'm going to give you it. these the, the three prong feet. Yeah. It was amazing. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, you just want to support that. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, with these, like, do you like, do you have any like improvements or things that you think you could, you would want to change? Like with the mm-hmm. Warmock or with the Nexus Enforcer? <laughs> Warmock looks sick. No, there's no changes. Maybe some more like, you know, articulation cuts here and there. But like, like you were saying, it, it's supposed to just be menacing, right? Big old, big old boy. I would like him to like be able to rear. So maybe there's some like type of hip where he can like lift up like, oh, like he's getting attacked. Kind of like the Oliphants from Lord of the Rings. But on these enforcers here, I do like them. Like the, the armor looks cool. The helmet looks cool. The weapon looks cool. I love the little tracking, you know, thingy yeah. that he has. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I have any improvements or like requests making yeah. changes on this. I feel the same way. Like, I feel like like I told you, the war mock articulation, I'm okay with that because, you know, even though you'd like to see that, it's going to increase the cost, right? Yeah. And so just having him with limited and it's maybe going to be cheaper for me, I'm right, already fine bait, with yeah. that. Yeah, I love that. Like he's kind of thinking of price, you know, maybe that's kind of his decision making. And then with the Nexus Enforcer, I have no improvements, no complaints. Like I think the sculpts <laughs> there, the paint's there. I love the orange visor. Yeah, dude, he's crushing it. Doing good, doing good. All right, another one here. This is from Legion's Gone as well. Wade from over at uh, Unparalleled Universe. He's been doing his Odious figures, right? And he revealed a new version. This like Yeti Odious. And the cool thing, I, it, this is the cool thing about these Odious figures. Like, yeah, it's a Bigfoot character, but where where Wade is kind of like pushing the envelope and like 
trying to do his own little niche, carve out his own little niche, is in the soft goods, man. So he did like, you know, to, I think three layers of clothing or two layers of clothing with his first yeah, with like that lumberjack one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the, the red, red and black plaid, the denim, the uh, zip up hoodie, and then a trench coat. Right. So he just really went all out on those soft goods. And then he also, I think during Comic-Con, he announced a, an army fatigue one. It's like an army, a green army jumpsuit with a right, metal yeah, yeah. helmet. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. yeah, and then now doing this Yeti dude but with like a, a coat, the fur lining. Like, I don't know. I think that's what his niche is going to be, and that's how he's going to like. Like, that's his like signature is this the amazing soft goods on these figures. Yeah. Honestly, I think this is this is the, I think this is the coolest odious today. Like, I love this figure, and you to get the you know the the Yeti instead. That's awesome. Like, even just taking off that odious head dude you could pop on like yeah. you know just like any sort of head and you can make it like some sort of warrior or something but yeah the the soft goods that's money they they did those so good and that's a rebel or sorry not Re- yeah rebel 10 customs um, she does them yeah she does them she okay. she does like a lot of things you can pick up a, a beautiful like april trench coat and a jubilee trench coat like she does an amazing job and yeah so they're kind of working together and uh, wade also did the paint apps on this so that's kind of cool but yeah, no, this is Yeti Man is, is fun. I do like the 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 military, like the fatigue odious one. I just yeah, to... dude, that one is nice. They're, they're, they're coming out great, these figures. Yeah. And he did say he will be doing another Kickstarter for these. So you can potentially get some bonuses. Last year, he also offered, last time he also offered like kind of just a base figure of Odious. So like no clothes, no nothing. Right, and it was, yeah. It was a pretty good price for that as well. All right, let's keep it going here. Haya. I, I just love talking about Haya's joy. Or sorry, excuse me, the Joy Toy tmnt line man they are cranking these out it was so fun to see these and it's just you know property i like it is that 118th scale but man with joe toy you can barely tell yeah true that man oh my gosh dude can they just upscale this whole line for 112 <laughs> like they would be the best tmnt figures ever like they they, they they would destroy all the neca stuff they would destroy everything yeah like oh, yeah. how realistic that april looks at the 118th scale it looks so good man and I like, you know, one of my complaints was with the foot soldiers where I felt like they went kind of too futuristic, um, but I like that this is not like, it's still classic April. It's not, there's no, you know, it's not too tactical. It's not too futuristic. <laughs> it still captures, you know, the classic April that I love and you get the freaking mouse Troy tech. Yeah. Yeah. Two mousers. Yeah. So that is, yeah, she looks amazing, man. I, and the likeness just looks so good at that scale yeah we i do wish it would be fun to up, upscale these we'll have we got in we haven't gotten a casey from them right no no oh that's no. next casey's <laughs> next yeah but here's everything you get with her you also get those fun bases that they do to kind of just build out your your set there mouser is some you know different gadgets here and there video camera news reporter microphone and some punching gloves so that's really fun but next up master splinter from joy toy looking so cool. love the little you know bamboo cut thing yeah the training that's a great accessory yeah and uh, these different weapons he also comes with four baby turtles in different poses man i i do like that a lot as well <laughs> i love the baby turtles that NECA did and it's always fun to get the baby turtles i almost bought the the mutant mayhem baby versions man <laughs> No, those are so ugly. I know. I mean, actually, actually, that's why I actually people, that's why I love them actually because they're not ugly. You're right. Oh my gosh, I feel like they they have the perfect accessories. Like these accessories are so well thought out, and those freaking baby turtles in the ninja poses. Oh my gosh, I kind of wish Neca's. Well, because I I hope when Neca does their Bayverse, that they do them like that. Because you know in the Bayverse, because in in the in the live action the first ones they didn't really show them training, but in the Bayverse they were like, you know what I'm saying. Yeah they would pull out yeah um, but yeah so this is really fun here you get in swinner again with the base i love the little like a uh, straw hat armor piece thing that he's coming right. with i right. love that man it just gets that split in that more traditional mm-hmm. look and honestly this one kind of even looks like more like the the bavers one you know this i'm itching for <laughs> uh, guys i need somebody to do, do the bavers turtles itching for it yeah that would be fun all right, but there's everything so far that Joy Toy has released, right? We got Bebop Rocksteady, we got the four bo- brothers, we got the two foot soldier variations and the shredder. So, like Josh was saying, I was gonna ask him what do you want next, but yeah, Casey, right? Oh yeah, you gotta give me. It's gotta be Casey. It's gotta be Krang. It's gotta be. I mean, honestly, Baxter have to, Stockman. Yeah, honestly, if I have Casey Krang and Baxter, I'm good. You're good. 
I yeah, I don't think I would need any more el- anything else really. I mean, yeah, Bebop and Rock City looks so good. Yeah. And um, just looking at these, like it, it really makes me like gripe more about the foot soldier. Because if you look at all of them, they're none of them have that kind of techno vibe. Granted, Shredder is silver because that's Shredder, though. You know what I'm saying? That's Shredder. He's metal. But like I feel like the Switch soldiers, it doesn't really fit them. Because you know, Rock City and Bebop, they're not kind of futuristic. They're no. more classic than anything. Way more classic. Yeah. Yeah, interesting choice. I think that maybe they were just trying to create some synergy then maybe with Shredder, but right. You're right. You're right about that. Because you're right. If you just take off the turtles and rock Bebop Rock City. They kind of match Shredder better. That's a good point. All right. I'll go ahead and wrap up our show today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this weekly episode. A big old week, man, from all of our friends firing on all cylinders. Let's go ahead and make our pick of the week. Josh, what are you thinking is your pick of the week? Holy crap. There's a lot of toys. We've been, we've, been, we've been here for a while. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't want to forget what happened at the very beginning of the show. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. The Godzilla was phenomenal. Godzilla was pretty great. Let's see um, what else. We also had you know, the battle droids. The, the battle the training droid, droid the was cool, man. The, the black and white blue beetle. I did like that. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I should just got it. whatever comes up to your mind first. You know that's that's the one that stood out, right? So I'm gonna go with the Hayato's freaking nuclear Godzilla. Freaking what is the fire Burn, burning Godzilla? Burning oh Godzilla. my gosh, man! The paint apps, the way that thing's glowing. It's phenomenal. The price, everything is perfect with that figure. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the addition of oh yeah, the, those alt pieces that we've never seen. Like, that's awesome. Edora melted heads, man. That is pretty cool. All right, I'm going to give it, since you took Godzilla. <laughs> Were you going to pick that one? <laughs> no, it is beautiful. I was not going <laughs> to pick him, but usually I go Godzilla, right? <laughs> no, I usually never go Godzilla. That's, you never. that's how that's how good that Godzilla yeah. is, because I'm not a Godzilla guy. That's a testament to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm gonna go with uh, the Spiro Toys Bushido, man. I've been waiting for that line and to get those those figures out there and like you know, getting them looking neat and cool. And the Seam in hand, yeah, in hand Samurai shots, yeah. Hunter. Yeah, so the, the bounty hunter or whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna give it to the Spiro Toys Bushido. All right, friends. Well, let us know down below your pick of the week. Thank you again for tuning in. And as always, friends, keep collecting, keep playing, and may the X Figure Gods smile upon you. Peace.